Hey guys, um, we will be starting in a couple of minutes um, and uh, we are going to have this call published immediately as well. So um, using it as an opportunity, uh, not just to conduct the weekly council call, but also as an opportunity to, to get uh, information out. So, um, you know, we are going to move ahead uh, at a specific time and uh, which is about five minutes and, and get across what we need to get across. So sit tight and uh, let's rock and roll. Hey guys, uh, I hope you can all hear me. Please give me some sign of life for the guys that are in the chat, for the group. Um, Ariel just went downstairs to get my mic. I'm gonna plug that in and then get started uh, because uh, from now on, we're actually uploading these calls immediately to YouTube uh, right after I'm done because uh, using that as a kind of mechanism of getting out like a lot of the information that I have to get out. And this is a good medium to do that. So we just uh, bear with me another couple of 10 seconds, Got a lot to go through. And so we're just picking up my mic.
Can you hear me? All right, one second. Yeah, one second, I'm putting it in a different. Mic test one, two. Mic test one, two. You can hear me? Beautiful. All right. I think everyone else has given me confirmation that I'm audible as well. Um, right now, um, I think we got Fito, we got Antoine, and we got Jonathan on the call. Um, I've gotten signs of life from all of them, so that's pleasant to know that they can hear me. Um, let me turn on my video. Oh, my video's already on. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you so much for uh, sent the first playlist of videos that I sent um, or that we post on YouTube to be more specific um, uh, because that's going to be a lot of the, that's going to constitute the predominant crux of today's conversation. Um, and uh, if you guys have any questions and comments saying anything you guys want to get out, um, just feel free to interrupt me uh, at any given time, because if, if not, this is going to be a stream of consciousness from my side. Um, uh, on the agenda for today is, well, first, let me take a, let me take a kind of look at what we want to do moving forward uh, with these uh, broker councils, because I know for the last two weeks, uh, we didn't have them. Uh, well, actually, last three weeks because one of them was Father's Day. Um, but according to, but of my of my actions was two weeks, and um, during this time, uh, we've been able to, apart from, you know, put together the set of releases that we want to and that we're going to discuss. We've also uh, really thought about how we want to use or what it, what type of what type of engagement system we want to use in order to be able to, to, to engage or inspire the continuous engagement of the next several thousand brokers that we plan on onboarding. Um, and that's not a self-evident idea, you know, cause it's not obvious what the appropriate strategy should be. Um, we are, and we, and I, I've, I've come up with something and I've ran it across, you know, several people that I think could be viable. It has its roots. And right now, speaking specifically as a as kind of more of a reoccurring uh, a reoccurring uh, engagement cycle, similar to the way that the broker council is a weekly reoccurring engagement cycle. Um, but how we can do that to expand uh, and include more people? Because at the current moment, uh, we are we're literally um, I literally mean about a day or two away uh, from doing a huge uh, direct to consumer push. Uh, and that is going to be accompanied by another wave of a very large uh, B2B push from the broker's perspective. And you guys will get a little bit of insight as to what we're planning on that side. Um, obviously, we're going to release um, the, the, the entirety of what that means for brokers and, and what that even is going to enable or what that's going to be attractive for brokers in the domain of. But um, even just the release of Instacrypto in the fashion that we're doing it will obviously spark a lot of new interest or re-engage old interest. So with kind of that new attention, uh, I wanted to underpin that with concrete mechanisms of, let's call it training, community management and engagement, um, which are uh, something that has to happen on a reoccurring basis. So if I was to revisit what we've done in the past, uh, we've, had, uh, uh, we've had daily webinars, we've had webinars that happen every, once every other day, uh, we've obviously had the broker council. Those are probably the closest things. And we did those for short periods of time. And those are probably the closest things to any reoccurring engagement system that we had. Um, what we learned from those is that they work and that in order to keep them working, you needed to make it more engaging, like every time, because people obviously get sent, sense like people get they, they develop a tolerance for them, even if it's very engaging the first several times. And so how, I, how we plan on combating that requirement for increased excitement, as well as 
getting everybody or not everybody, but different constituencies that we have to engage with that is all a part of the evolution of the broker council. Um, if you remember the initial reason for the broker council when we started it uh, about two months ago was simply to, uh, to have a forum to address the like growing, growing, growing questions that were not being answered. And what I think we've accomplished with the broker council is that, that the people that are a part of the broker council are far more comfortable uh, and they just have their questions answered. And I think that that right there is good for the people that are a part of it, but not good for the people that are not a part of it. And so then, and we, we've, we've experienced qualitative differences in the way that the people in the broker council treat global exchange. They're obviously more, they're obviously more temper, like they have a better temperament about it because they feel informed, uh, you know, whether or not they're, you know, daily actively pursuing the opportunity. That's not what we really care about. What we care about is their relationship with the, with the technology or the vision and the people in the council just have a far better one, even if their engagement is low. And so we know that it has worked for the 12 people. If the, if the objective is just to have uh, getting everybody that is a part of this kind of engagement process to have more, uh, more tolerance and more uh, purview into the products. And so we want to expand that access to everybody. Now, just doing a weekly company-wide call is kind of the obvious answer, but I don't think that is the, the answer that will allow us to continue to engage with that level. Because I think I think that that will have some depreciating effects over time. So what I'm actually going to do is a continue the broker council, but make it much less of a one on 12 conversation, although it could be still very um, based in two way communications, but make it uh, me talking to everybody, but addressing the council. So it's almost like uh, a hearing that's obviously done by the people on the call, but is addressing, is going to be live for everybody to see um, immediately. And so that's one kind of element. It's gonna be, uh, I'm gonna release the, I'm gonna release the structure for this, this week, um, which is something like, uh, there are gonna be people that we invite and it's gonna be a rotating list. That's the other thing. The, the council members will be a rotating list. Now, it, it, it probably means that the guys that are currently invited will be the first several to be invited, but it will be like, let's say this week, X amount of people from the group of 12 people that we have right now are invited. They get to be on the call with me. I speak to them, they get to ask questions, but everybody else also gets to watch the stream and it goes to YouTube right away. So that's just more of like a, let's call it a state of the union that happens on a weekly basis. So it's easily consumable um, by a live stream. Also, it is consumable on YouTube immediately thereafter. Um, in conjunction with that, uh, we are really thinking about ways on maybe even a daily basis on how to engage. Um, I have developed something for that, something that's very um, a gamified. That's something that has roots and incentives that we want to pay out and things of that nature. Um, I think that I'll save that probably alongside the release of the, the of Broker 2.0, which is, which is the, the name of the, the, the entire set of releases, which includes a technology release as well as an incentive release for the, the next generation of the, the Global Exchange Broker platform. So, but for now, from now on, that is how the broker council will work. It will be much more heavily promoted. Obviously right now we don't promote the broker council because we don't, we don't particularly, nobody knows about it because only the people in the 12 know about it. But now it will be a promoted event. Uh, the people that are invited to be on camera with me will be obviously promoted as well. Um, and everybody is willing to, is able to join. Certain people are willing to have dialogue with them. So those are obviously selected in the, in the previous week. So that's what's gonna happen as a fixture every Sunday. It's gonna be much more like a, conf a press conference. Um, and then with, with the release of the broker, the new broker platform or the, the new rebranded um, paradigm of the broker platform, which we'll talk about briefly today, um, I'll be releasing a daily incentive package 
Um, so I just wanted to put that to the side clear on how we're going to do that. Um, in, in conjunction with that, um, I've also maybe this, this is, this is slightly, uh, you know, this has more to do with just personnel and sentiment and, and kind of momentum, uh, up until now, uh, we had you know, with the, the team had made it clear and I had also made it clear that I, what I wouldn't be the ideal person to be engaging with the, the, a, the consumer audience um, from a public perspective, also the broker audience from a public perspective. Those of you that have been with us uh, before, let's say January 2020, and I'm speaking right now also to the people that are gonna watch this on YouTube immediately after, as well as the gentlemen that are on this call. Um, but those of you that have been with us since uh, 2000, uh, before January 2020 would recall that I would be um, you know, doing a lot of the things that, for example, you see Sal do now, or, or even stuff that you see Ariel and Rog or Warren and these guys do. Um, after about January, February, I tapered that down a lot simply because we collectively decided that I had to focus very aggressively on uh, development, product development, uh, systems development, security with the team. Uh, that role is now shifting back. I think I may have touched on this in some other calls that I've done where it's, a, you know, it's always a cycle. But now I'm making a, just a clear uh, dictation that from, from literally this day, from the release of this video, as well as the release of my videos that I've made and put on YouTube, I will be the primary uh, face as it pertains to delivering information direct to consumer, direct to the mass market that doesn't know about global exchange, but also direct to the brokers. And so some, that, that will be, I think, uh, at least an interesting experience for people uh, to be able to again, get my purview. Um, my goal is to release the better half of about five videos per day. Um, and I, that most of those for the next, let's say 30 to 35 days are actually just updates and, and fixes, um, you know, just ways to, to, to kind of, uh, to, to elucidate what we've been working on. But then underpinning those will be uh, much more just engagement, again, content engagement and ways that people are able to join Global Exchange and accomplish what they want to accomplish in whatever domain. So I think uh, me coming back to the forefront um, is also a sign of where the company wants to go now, which is back into uh, building momentum as opposed to, uh, you know, getting everything together. Because now that we've been able to kind of do that part, we have a, a excuse my language, and I, I'm so gonna say, I won't even do it, but we have a lot in the tank in terms of uh, intellectual property, but just in terms of uh, unique solutions, unique systems from a technology perspective, unique brands that that is you know head and shoulders above what's in the market, but we obviously haven't talked about or listened because we didn't have the bandwidth for people to learn about it. Um, partially that bandwidth of myself. Uh, and now that's obviously being turned into what, what I'm discussing now. So just wanted to put those two things out before we get into kind of just the announcements of the day. So everybody on this call, um, but definitely not everybody watching would have seen the videos, the first videos I put out um, regarding Insta crypto. And so for people that want to know what that kind of looks like, I want to, I want to give you guys an idea here. Um, let me see if I could have you draw it up. Just give me one second. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, I think you guys can all see my screen now. Give me a thumbs up if you can, or a thumbs up if you can, a thumbs down if you can't. Beautiful. So, primary. Okay, so the, I think the entirety of all, all, let's say, opinions, sentiment, experiences, like everything people have, you know, uh, come to, to, in, to realize or experience with global exchange has culminated or organized itself into three categories. And these are not like three product lines. They're not three types of users. There are three categories that whereby products, users, uh, sentiment, uh, 
um, lucrative opportunities uh, intertwine. And we've developed an internal, an internal map to look at this because we realized, okay, we're heading now into what we want to start as really generating the next wave of customers, the next wave of brokers. And that means that we have to re we have to re-examine ourselves understand our value propositions as an ecosystem and then manifest those in paradigms that a people can relate to and b people can self-select themselves in and why that's important is that the first wave of customers and brokers that literally have extended until now like, like from the time it's about one year from the time that we you know started talking about this in may of last year all the way until today People, all, people from all walks of life found some optimism or prospect in you know, en entertaining uh, or learning about global exchange, but there was no self-selection process. It was kind of like everybody wanted to pick out a global exchange, what made sense for them. And, and you can see how that actually manifests itself by everybody having a different opinion on it and everybody having a different reason for their opinion on it. And so I'll give you an example both me and Ariel coming from, like if we were just, you know, people engaging with global exchange, just as anybody else did, then I could at this point be thrilled with global exchange and he can be thrilled, but we can be thrilled for completely different reasons. He might be thrilled because his favorite color is blue and I might be thrilled because I'm able to do e-transfer deposits, whatever it is. Similarly, he could be angry, I could be angry and we could be angry for two different reasons. He could be angry because you know, the altcoin that he wants to trade is not supported by global exchange yet. And I could be angry because I live in Lechenstein and, and I don't have the simplest access. And so why, what that's a symptom of is a one, one fit, you know, a one size fits all mentality. And if you watched my vision readdressed for 2020 July, that's the first thing I tried to tackle down and global exchange is not one size fit all, fits all. It's, a community of people that have almost nothing to do with each other, nothing to relate with each other. You have traders, you have people trying to buy Bitcoin for the first time. You have uh, people that are people that are influential in other domains of life that want to make money as a broker. You have people that are influential in crypto trying to make money as a broker, right? And so, you know, that's just, uh, there are, you have people that are white labels. You have people that are just now developers, a big growing community of developers. You have people that are just investors. You have people that are using us to buy large amounts of Bitcoin, small amounts of Bitcoin, use ICE, uh, you know, so many different things. And so with that domain comes a group of people that don't look like each other, that don't feel like each other. And if they all tug at the same, you know, set of values, it's not going to work out. And so that... I would say is the best example. That's the best explanation of our first wave of momentum, which I would say went all the way for about a year. Um, you know, obviously momentum works in cycles, but I'm just saying it, I, I'm, I'm making the arbitrary distinction that it, it was about the time we started till now. And that's fine because at the beginning, you don't want to, you know, self segregate your message too much. Um, and you don't want to, you kind of want a homogenous community, even if it's not meant to be homogenous. But now that we're going into, let's call it phase two, we want to be much more clear with where in the global exchange universe, any person that is engaging with global exchange can fit. And so this is how we have analyzed that. It's what you're about to see on my screen. And again, this is not a clear cut like you know, GX breaks down into three products or three levels or three, this and the other. It's definitely not that. It can't be that because of how dynamic we've made uh, some of the access points. Um, but if it was to be something that looks close to that, it would be DTC, which stands for direct to consumer. Then you have a broker, and then you have.
soak it. So this, and, and I know two of those words are very familiar to you guys, which is broker and token. Um, it doesn't mean the definition that you guys maybe have thought it to me, which is, oh, token means the GX token broker means GX broker. I'm, I, I want to try to take this as an opportunity to express that these are lucid paradigms that have interoperating states, people, users, feelings, sentiment, money travels through these paradigms pretty loosely. But if we had to draw some borders is what it would look like. The first video, like if you look at my, uh, the videos that I released, they're broken down into these three categories. Play playlist one, direct to consumer. Playlist two, broker 2.0. Playlist three, GX transformation, GXT transformation. So I'm releasing the onslaught of content, which obviously the majority of will happen in the first, first week or so of me talking about this now, in these three categories. Within these three categories, there are obviously subsets that better classify someone's engagement. And so let's call it, let's say that uh, under direct to consumer, the first one that, that we did was obviously Insta Crypto as a direct to consumer point. And the entire video, all the videos that you've seen so far are just, excuse me, uh, I'll show you in here. Like if you click playlist one, direct to consumer, there's one subset for Insta Crypto, there's one for a crypto lottery. There's obviously several more that are not even on here that we're ready to move with. And why that's important, I'm showing right here. So under direct to consumer, you're looking at, let's say the first one being, Insta crypto. Okay. And could be something like crypto lottery being number two, etc. Right. So, and then under broker, it will have its own, you know, relative engagement points and under token, obviously a tremendous amount. So that's how it's going to play out. That's how the content is going to be released. Why is that important? Um, and B, what does that mean for you guys? What does that mean for the people watching? Um, it first means that we're dedicating ourselves, our resources, our staff to native messaging for each of these subcategories. And those native messaging components are obviously expressed through advertising, through word of mouth, through social media, through, you know, whatever it is, and won't have anything to do with each other for the most part. Like right now we have one Facebook group for the purpose of consolidation, but that Facebook group is, is not, it's not working for anybody because it's trying to work for more than one, two constituents. And you can see that we, are able to engage people, but the engagement is con the engagement sometimes doesn't make sense for someone reading it. And so that is very important to see already. Why that hasn't been a tremendous problem until recently is because only recently did we even start talking about these two as direct to consumer applications. And I've never made that articulation as I've made on this call today, clear as on this call today. But now that it's more visible that the engagement points transcend, you know, one homogenous vision, I think there's going to be lots of conflict. And that just might be out of the lack of information. I think that could be out of the, you know, you know, frustration on certain levels, or even that could be out of one doing really well and one not. And Although that's a natural outcome of releasing things, that's not easy for a particular constituent to maybe swallow. So what we have to do is we have to speak the language to the person that wants to be spoken to in that language. And so the first degree of separation is these three things. Direct to consumer obviously means app, the products, apps, brands that we think are so good they don't need someone to sell them. That's to, to put it frankly, 
Coinbase's mobile app doesn't need someone to sell it. None of the crypto exchanges do, or they don't believe so. I mean, whether they do or not is not my, my, my kind of position. They don't believe so. They don't believe so that they need to reshare their fees or anything like that, or they might to some small level, but not like the way that we've talked about it. Fortnite doesn't feel like they need someone to sell it, obviously, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you invest the capital expenditure as a company to build an application or a service that's so good that it could not need, it doesn't need to be sold. It just needs to be presented. That would be what I dictate as direct consumer. So far, we've had none of those. And maybe people think it's because we don't focus on that or we don't want to. No, it's because we have brokers. And so, I mean, I think I touched on this in, a, in two of my videos that I released. It's like, no, you don't, you, you're, you don't, your product, like if it's, well, let's just say it's Amway and I don't want to, you know, compare ourselves to Amway in any regards, but Amway soap is not as cheap as other soap. I don't know. I've never used it, but I'm not, I'm not willing to say it's the best soap in the world either, but that's because they have the business model positions, the brokers to make up for that. That's what those margins are there for. Tide or Irish spring don't have that. They, their product has to speak for themselves. And so we have not, we've never even had the notion of building something like that simply because we're like, well, then where does that leave the brokers? And I think I touched on that in the last video of the Instacrypto series, which is if Instacrypto works the way that it's supposed to work, and I'll show you how it works on the latest version on my phone and you guys can all download it too. Then that's really a hell of an inst a consumer app and crypto lottery is the same degree of kind of potential and the other apps that I haven't even released that are completely done. Like this is the other, this is the other thing with the Insta, with the direct to consumer vibe, the direct to consumer vibe implicates that, that they are, they're finished products. Usually they're well put together. They're built for adoption, not built for, you know, you know, kind of sales processes. They're built more for adoption. They're built really well to put ad dollars behind paid ads, most, most notably PPC. Um, and the other thing is you don't really worry too much as a company. If you have a hundred direct to consumer products, because the problem that we face when we don't have direct to consumer, direct to consumer quality products, which we haven't had is that, Oh, not only does it need to make sure that everybody's taken care of and every it's, it's capable of being just redistributed to some degree. Also, we have to invest the time, money and energy into educating the people that are now going to need to compensate for the fact that it's not a direct to consumer ready product or it's priced more expensively than one, whatever it is. So that's where you would see all the investment into training and community engagement and growing your affiliate network and what all the companies do that are in the traditional affiliate marketing space. That's obviously a bandwidth that the company has to take into consideration when releasing a new product, but that is not a bandwidth that McDonald's takes into consideration when releasing a new burger. Um, because they, there's no inherent additional, you know, paradigm change. It's another very tasty, probably well-engineered, highly addictive sandwich that sits next to all of their other ones that sells itself. That's cheap. That's so cheap. It's competitively rational to go get it. And that's where we're at. So we can release 15 DTC apps if their quality is of that nature, if the software's user interface is of that nature, you couldn't release 15 versions of GX Nitrous. It's impossible because GX Nitrous had so many places where the brokers had to step in, not just because, not just for their sake, but also for our sake, because it wasn't, it wasn't the, it wasn't the consumer quality product. It was something that needed to be sold and explained and handheld as you guys do. You couldn't do 15 of those because then you'd have to invest 15 times the amount of time into educating the brokers or team to do that. You can see some of the, you can see some of the latency issues we experienced with that as well. Not with the direct consumer because the direct consumer essentially just people that like it come here. If you don't like it, don't worry about it. 
That, that's the mentality. And so why that I'm saying that is, of course, also to keep the structure comp, you know, coherent, but also because these are just two. And they, as they, they couldn't be more different. Like I'll explain Insta Crypto a little bit more detail today, but Crypto Lottery, I went in great detail in the previous broker council calls. Obviously, the people that have not seen the previous broker council calls, which is everybody has no idea about Crypto Lottery, apart from some of the videos that we've released. But you guys that were on the calls have a significant degree of understanding about it because um, we talked about it in, in great extent. So, but since you guys do, you know what the power of Crypto Lottery is once we release it to the consumer market, to the consumer market. You know, Instacrypto is obviously built for that. They have nothing to do with each other. In other words, someone could use Instacrypto and be beyond thrilled or hate it or love it, or a million people could use it and never even know about crypto lottery. And they shouldn't, or never be interested. Maybe we, that will be our prerogative if we want to do cross advertising in the, in the mobile application. But it's not necessary. It's not like it's the requirements for each other. It's not like there's an incentive plan baked into that per se. And so like that, we really do have a, a pretty intense lineup of solutions that, that are, they're not, it's a solutions, entertainment, uh, whatever it is. And they're beyond what the world is seeing right now. I'm not saying that in a, you know, in a light fashion, you'll see. Um, but that means that that basket of direct to consumer apps are going to keep growing. And, and we're not that overly interested in does this one work at mass scale or not? We know that it works. And that's the other thing about beautiful, that's a, another beautiful thing about direct D to C is that it doesn't need to be the biggest thing in the world. It just needs to work. And the, it's a software, it's gonna scale. The cost of scaling is very little. So with that mentality, the, the difference again between the domain of the broker and the domain of the consumer is that if I'm a customer and I use Instacrypto, I don't care if another customer is using Instacrypto. I couldn't care at all. When I have a customer use Coinbase, I don't give, I don't care at all if someone else is using Coinbase and is working for them or is not working for them. I mean, I might read some reviews or something, but once I've used it, it works for me, I don't care. That's obviously not the case inside of the domain of a sales team or an affiliate network. Because inside of a sales team or an affiliate network, you have to have continuous positive sentiment from that sales team's customers. So everybody's customers have to be happy or else that sentiment starts to erode. And then of course, the, that team has to be happy. I'm nothing against them. I, I was the one that constantly, you're going to see how much more epic we're going to make even that domain. But right now I'm talking D to C, so I'm expressing the difference. So when it comes to that, that is why we're really excited because the scaling that we can do from an application perspective, because we've already made the big investments into the ledger, into Vault as a service and security, all of that's done. Now it's just print, print, press and repeat for whatever app. And so that's exciting. And it's not just exciting, it's refreshing because that's allowing us to really spread our horizons and entrench ourselves as kind of, you know, an infallible entity in several structural communities. I'm all excited about that. Um, those are the two DTC right now. But obviously, once I finish explaining those two via the videos I'm releasing, um, the next several will come very quickly, very, very quickly. So before I get back into the Insta crypto hyper domain, which is what I'm going to do on this call. And because you guys have seen the videos, I want to go quickly through what the structural or what the, what it feels like in the broker domain, because right now we are in the DTC and then what it feels like in the token, the new token domain and how they kind of relate with each other. Okay. So I'm leaving now I'm going into broker. Now I've not released any information about what I'm about to say, and I'm going to be very careful as to not release that much information right now, because I do want to spend the next week bathing even the brokers and the token holders in the direct to consumer mantra, because it's something they have to understand that we're not, that those apps, those DTC apps are not, Oh, let's plug them into what we're doing now. No, it's a new paradigm for us. And we've already seen what it feels like when customers that have nothing to do with the customers that were brought in by the brokers or what our current networks looks like, when they experience that, it's exceptional. And you gotta imagine how liberating that it's when you can scale horizontally and vertically. Okay, now coming into the, so that's why I'm not trying to like lose, lose my mind on how exciting even the broker domain is, but um, it's, 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 so let me first take this. For all my talk on DTC, that's not my shit. 
excuse my French, that's not my thing. I'm just saying that is how that domain works. And that is the commitment we've made as a company to have communities at the DTC app level, even like can build communities at that level, at that, you know, per use case. But my passion, my, my, what I think I'm contributing to the world has always been the idea of GX broker. Um, what is that? I would, when I make my, my entire playlist expressing what the broker looks like 2020, which I haven't obviously done, I will talk about that, where, what was the inception, where it came and how it feels right now. But as you guys know, it's something like, I wanna help, I wanna make it so that everybody owns their customer base for life, that you own not just your direct customers, but every customer that spawns out of that, and that you own that across agnostic platforms so you don't have to be married to pitching one thing one coin or one thing or anything like that. And that there's no cost to doing it. Like per se, it's not like you're going to ever, you can't really fail because you're not paying for it. It's just an addition once I'm just on the fact. So it's not really a mech. I never wanted to look at it. Like it's this huge life decision to become a broker. And like, if it doesn't work, everything's going to fail and fall apart. It's not that it's never going to be that it's much more of a new paradigm of entrepreneurship that I want to spend. That's like, digital financial brokering across many industries, crypto underlying all of them. That's kind of the, va the vague vision. To more or less degree, that expressed itself in helping people get crypto, getting paid for that, helping people become brokers, getting paid for that. Now, let's call it the, the, let's call the, the, the new paradigm when I'm releasing broker 2.0. In Broker 2.0, that's just not a that's not just a rebranding because I honestly didn't even want to rebrand it because I just like the or current branding for Broker. Um, but in Broker 2.0, you won't. First and foremost, it's not just like it's not just us using that name to spa, to spawn some momentum. Actually, we're going to invest very little in the notion of creating momentum there because we know the actual the technological solution that we're bringing to this community is that profound. So first and foremost, you can start to see implications of what that looks like in Instacrypto, even though they're not related like that. They are related from the fact that if you watch the Instacrypto videos, you realize that a GX customer before was hostage to GX. Instacrypto now makes GX one of the many vendors that people can buy crypto from while GX still underpins as the operating system. Well, as a, if that's what your life becomes as a customer, now imagine that same philosophy for the brokers, whereby right now it's this notion, I'm a GX broker. I get paid to get people to buy crypto from GX and I get paid to make people GX brokers more or less. It's the same feeling that was, that was the case pre Insta crypto, which is like, I'm buying crypto from GX via their e-transfer, via their bank transfer, via their wire transfer. But we are, you already know what we did. We flipped that on its head and releasing, in my opinion, the coolest consumer product for crypto and Insta crypto. Similarly, that's what I'm doing for broker 2.0. I've built, I've rebuilt first and foremost, it has its own entire web application and you can see that at, I believe it's app.brokerapp.io. So this functions now, um, again, I'm not trying to publicize this yet. It's, it is done, but I'm not trying to publicize this because there has to be some tweaks to the front end website, but essentially, by the way, this is a new broker app, broker logo, everything like that. You can now look at broker. At what, what you don't see on this page again is GX because the broker app like Insta crypto, like crypto lottery is not beholden to only GX. Any company can now plug themselves in to accessing what we've created as a robust brokerage network using the broker app technology the company can present 
opportunities in an opportunity marketplace. Any broker from any walk of life can join the broker app as a broker. That's what it says, create free brokerage. Free doesn't mean free. Free means you get the software for free to actually be able to make money from any of the brands that are using broker app. You got to pay their requirement in the same way that you had in order to be a GX broker, you have to stake a thousand coins. But now the, the technology of being a broker, the ones that we've had, and what does that mean? That's obviously back office. That's obviously um, support as a software, not support as a service. That's obviously the compensation structure being uni level and unlimited level. So all of those things are now available for both sides of the equation. And as a broker, you're in complete liberty to navigate that marketplace however you want. And you can choose, okay, I want to be an OTC broker. I'm already an OTC broker. All of you guys are OTC. Okay, perfect. That means that when someone uses Instacrypto per Instacrypto, I get paid because that OTC broker, pro, uh, the OTC broker franchise is linked to that. An OTC broker, if that's linked to, for example, when someone, as you guys know, every application within the GX ecosystem could be at this point about 20. Anytime someone is selling, buying crypto, inside of there, the OTC broker is still getting paid, even in crypto lottery, even in Insta crypto, even in next one that might not have anything to do with anything. Every time there's an, a transaction from fiat to crypto, you're getting paid based on the emails that you signed up, right? So that's, that's essentially the OTC broker brand inside of the new broker app. Give you guys a little sneak preview. There, I just logged in with my GX account, obviously. So it's a completely different animal. Let me get that straight. This is the last part I'm working on. This right here is going to be given to every broker. Just to give you some of the features without, again, spoiling too much, although I think I already have. What you see so far, this is your profile section as a broker. This is my profile that I get to set. I haven't set it, that's why it's still Latin, you know, gibberish. Every broker's customer count is here that obviously only can increase. Your network type, you have a brokerage rating. Then you have services, which I haven't added my services. I just go into my backups, I don't know, come here. I can add my testimonials as a broker, my partners, and if I provide any consulting. The services would be if I sell crypto. Partners would be, I sell crypto through global exchange, whatever. For services could be, I get help people, you know, get access to lotteries. I do that through crypto lottery. You're just starting to see now what the relationship is. So the question is, wait, what, what's the purpose of this particular five pages? Is it just retelling it to yourself? Like, why do I need to upload my own stuff? I already know all this information. No, this is sent to your clients. The broker app gives every broker their own domain of this is my brokerage. This is what I do. These are the services that I provide. These are the, you can pay me for this. You can engage with me for this. You could see my client testimonials. You could see what I've done. You could see my reviews. If you want to buy crypto, do it for me. It's essentially giving every brokerage their own storefront and not just the storefront, but also easy mechanisms of capturing value without having to give it up to any of the brands that you're brokering for, including Global Exchange. So this is actually a sales tool. I worked a lot in the insurance industry, so I have a lot of experience knowing how people talk about their, themselves as a credible insurance broker, or even real estate broker, mortgage broker, mutual fund broker. Took all of that kind of sentiment, made it a digital profile. Right, you're trying to sell someone a, you know, five million dollar house. Apart from showing them the house, like let's say the house is nice, because that's kind of a prerequisite. Then what do you say? Well, you can say, well, look at all my clients, they love me. Look at all the great companies I've worked with. Look at all the, look at the rating I got from the eight uh, real estate agency. Look at all of these things. That's what they do. That's how you. That's how you try to build credibility that you should you should buy the house to this guy, not the next guy. Took all of that. 
made it into a digital, digital profile that could be sent to anybody. Every broker has their own profile. Okay, what, what's here on the right hand side? It says broker bot. Right now, what this actually is, is your support chat. So you don't need to go anywhere except inside here. You could actually talk directly to your support. And I'm, no man, I think I'm just talking shit with, uh, with these guys here, but it'll be like, hey, I am looking for my commissions. Immediately, that goes into the same support chat I talked about in the Insta Crypto purchase. I have an Insta Crypto app, the one that's already GX chat. It's now being homogenized on every level. The, the, the support team can respond. Now, you might wonder, wait, wait a minute. Well, if this is going out to my customers, well, they're obviously not gonna talk to the support team on behalf of me. You got it. That chats for your customers to talk to you. So now you have a vehicle of capturing your customer's attention when they land to your page, the same vehicle we use to talk to you. So this entirety, and people can see everything, they can see all the elements, all the data points that you want them to see about your brokerage. Up here, this is a chart, revenue, whatever you want, but obviously we're not forcing anybody to show any particular data, but we are, you can see the brokerage valuation. We've developed an algorithm to actually value people's brokerages approximately. So it's as difficult as valuing any small business based on the customers and the, because at the end of the day, a global exchange brokerage can never go down in value. You might not be able to find a buyer for it, but it can't go down in value because you never lose customers. Customers can never leave. They just can never take us off purchasing. So your volume could go down. So your temporary earning power has gone down. But if that customer ever wants to buy again, that's still your customer. So we've developed systems for that. That's just one little piece of the broker app. The entire management ecosystem where you can control your brokerage, control the assets and stuff that you sell, your CRM marketing funnels. I mean, as there's not just button on screen, they're done. If I click CRM, the way that I've worked on the CRM was with insight in people from Salesforce saying, I'm trying to build software that can rework any brokerage in the world, mutual funds, real estate, crypto. They're like, wait, what's a crypto broker? I'm like, don't worry, I'll tell you later. Look at the way the CR, the back office, it's, it's an insult to call this a back office. This is the most advanced software for any financial professional. Add a dashboard by searching what you're looking for. We're not telling you how you should view your statistics. You set that up, it's all dynamic. Let's say, I wanna see customers, total customers. It opens that up. That's one tab. Full screen that, please. Or sorry, no, that'll be dropping it down. Search it, whatever it is. I could search it, obviously that filters that. Okay, that's not enough information. Add a new tab. Let's say uh, total brokers. And that's a new tab, pulls that in. Let's say X, Y, Z, you know, revenue, direct transactional revenue, et cetera. I just don't have any direct transactional revenue, so I'm going to show you. And I could save this as a view. Okay, this is my primary analytics view. Save it. Oh, new dashboard view. So now I could just open up my primary analytics or dashboard one. And I could get rid of all of it. I'm not interested in seeing this anymore. I could reconfigure this. This is built for auditing. This is built for secondary markets. This is built for any type of financial service because you're not just doing crypto. You're not just even doing global exchange anymore. Any brand uses this. Obviously you have your support. That's just the CRM. That's all I'm going to go in right now. Just give you guys a little bit of example. And of course you can pick, you have a brand marketplace. Like if you scroll out here, brands right now it's Pulse GX PSA because we haven't done the official outside marketing for getting brands on. That's not going to be a tough sale. And you can work with any brand you want. And the broker app is the fundamental brokering technology of the 21st in my opinion, for all of this stuff. Global Exchange proved that. Even at a small scale, it proved that. Now any company can abide by it. As a broker, you're not, you're, not, you're not hostage to us. That's what I always wanted to say. I never understood this concept that people are like, I'm leaving Global Exchange or I'm joining Global Exchange. I don't think it doesn't work like that. You can't, it's, you know, it's global exchange is a ubiquitous platform. Like I said, I have like a lot of experience in insurance. 
majority of the insurance companies I've already spoken to, they'll be on here. People will be using global exchange. They won't know about that. So power is inc incredible. That the broker paradigm is diverse. It's, and there's obviously on my phone, I have, guess what? This will broker more website version will come out as soon as I release the broker 2.0. This is the basis of broker 2.0. Everything gets measured. Everyone has a secondary market for their brand. Now you can talk about your brokerage as an asset that you build. Look at my brokerage valuation and you can resell it. There's a, there's an escrow service for reselling it. You could get partners. You can make file tax and take it there if you want to, or you can stay rogue. It's not a problem. Marketing service. It's all there. It's not just for us. It's for any crypto companies, for any company. Um, all the direct to consumer apps that we're releasing, they're all brands. Crypto Lottery is a brand. Insta Crypto is a brand. GX is actually not a brand. I was there, it was a while ago. They're all brands there. You as a broker can choose. Oh, I'm not interested in Crypto Lottery. I'm not interested in Insta Crypto. I'm interested in, uh, in VSA. I'm interested in, uh, you know, just OTC. I'm cool with that. But you know, have, again, it's dynamic. Now each one of them will have their own staking requirements. People that are already brokers get grandfathered in. All of that. Okay, Siri, relax. And Ariel is like responding to me as if I'm uh, talking to him. Um, so the, uh, the, the, it's, uh, I'm, I've, I've shown you about 5%, the broker app, the broker paradigm. This, this, do you understand now that the unlimited commission structure, this software is ubiquitous for any company, any person. You join broker app, doesn't mean you join global exchange. There'll be a cost for it. There'll be some menial cost for it. It'll be more like software and then the, the part that I think you guys should be interested in is you build your network once across one platform. You never need to build it again. You don't need to build a GX team and a XYZ team and a ABC team. No need for that anymore. The same thing that people don't. One of the things that I never heard anybody say anything bad about Global Exchange is the fact that you never lose people. Like it's unlimited levels type of thing. That's, I think everybody agrees is a pretty phenomenal idea, especially since we executed that. Imagine imposing that. You build one team for the rest of your life, you build one brokerage, just like that. My, 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 one of my closest friends built one of Canada's largest ANS brokerages. They never built it six times. But had he had to do that, he wouldn't be anywhere. Now that's possible. And this is just the beginning. There's training, certification. Yeah, it's like that in of itself is a huge domain. But as you can see, I want to make this clear. We're not an affiliate marketing company. Similarly, like I did in the Insta crypto in the direct to consumer business or paradigm, we're not a crypto exchange. Like we're not like a OTC desk. No, all the OTC desks are getting on Insta crypto. All the people that want financial for whatever it is are going to get on broker app to be able to get their brokers networks that they pop along. We're the platform. Like the only comparison I've ever seen historically would be like, like WG. I'm not a, not, not sorry, not WFG, not WG in the Forex and the WFG, which is an insurance company, MLM insurance company that um, I think was bought by Aon later. I don't know. It's very, it's, it's an old company. I, I'm not using it as a, like my, that's not my aspiration by any means, but the idea there was you took kind of the Primerica exploded the notion of insurance and, and multi-level marketing as they did it first. WFG came in the late nineties and said, Hmm, this sounds very interesting, but we're not trying to be an insurance company. What if we built a platform or any insurance company could essentially access our multi-level marketing infrastructure? WG it became far more lucrative than any other company because think about the pitch to the insurance companies. Now, hi, Mr. And Mrs. Insurance company in Kansas in New York in Ontario, small insurance company or large insurance company. If you, if you, if you give us exclusive authorization to your product line, you'll have a hundred thousand agents on the floor tomorrow, or you could try to build that yourself. That's a reasonable comparison, but they don't have any software and they're selling insurance. We're also a lot of insurance brokers are also allowed to be on here, by the way. So it's like, we're going head to head with them. That's not a problem, but I just want to make that clear in the sense that we're not an, like, we're not an affiliate marketing company. We just reconstitute the entire affiliate marketing program structure the notion of it we're not an otc this we reconstitute everybody uses that 
They use this. Now, whether we're gonna be successful at trying to be that or not is yet to be seen, but we're clear that that's what we are. You, the reason you can't fail at global exchange is it's impossible for global exchange to fail in the classical terms. And I'm not saying that because I'm optimistic and delusional. I'm very cautious and very aware of the proclivities of failure, but I'm also aware that when you're not the manufacturer of the product, when your horse is not in the race like that, the degree to which you're scaling is your success. In other words, yeah, thank you so much, Anto. I appreciate, I appreciate you being on, I'm sorry. And I know, I know I'm ranting a little and I, I would have liked to make this more concise, but now that I started talking, I did want to get a lot of this off. Anto, thank you so much for being on. Have a, have a very successful appointment. You'll definitely be able to watch the rest on YouTube. Thanks, boss. So I just, he was just hopping off. Um, the, uh, just giving that a little bit of a, a little bit of an example there. Um, the, we, to make money as a, one of you guys, people that already know about global exchange, you have an opportunity that I will never give to anybody, which is right now you broker everything. That's not going to be the case. As soon as I release broker app for the next broker signing up, he has to sign up for broker app. There's a cost level there, maybe $5 a month or something small to just be on the app platform on the, on the broker side. And then he has to select the companies that brands that he wants to be a broker for in that structure through here. And they all have their requests. So let's say the OTC broker is a thousand coins or whatever. So that's one. You guys right now are going to get grandfathered into the whole thing. We'll discuss what the mechanics of that are. Same thing on the direct to consumer side. There will never ever be another person that overrides the crypto lottery and Insta crypto. That's not happening. I'm not releasing that. That license no longer is going to exist. You guys have that just because I'm grandfathering people in. Let's say we have 2000 brokers of which like, let's say 500 are active. That's it. I'm not, I don't need more. Now the next broker per se is going to sign up and he's going to select Insta crypto. And that's what he's going to be doing. And that's the, that's the sandbox in which we work with him in. So yeah, that's, and th again, now you think about it like this. We're no longer the ones building the communities even on when the broker, from the broker app perspective, not obviously from the D to, the funniest thing is that in the D to C, if I put on my Insta crypto hat, I'm the brand on broker. So every time I say something, I'm almost counter, kind of, I'm contradicting myself just because I had to play both roles. But, but the average person, like if I was just broker app operator, if I just, you know, if we were just broker app operator, then no, we're not building com We're not building content. It's not like it's my training. We're not building community management. We're not building, you know, all of that. Like we're not building any of that. We are providing the ability for other people to do that. Now in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Insta crypto domain using broker app, Yeah, of course we're doing that building the network. It is, it's, you know, that's just to give you guys a little bit of a taste. So Insta crypto is available now in two full days. I think that, we will run, start running the ads for the mass market. I'm just waiting on some pro calculator to be fixed inside of the app. Obviously, once I'm, we're done with the breadth of the slew of content for Insta Crypto, then we'll siphon that off as its own community of which anybody can join, no, no limitations. Crypto Lottery is done. That siphons off as its own community and that's a vibe, it's a gas gam. That's people that want to game. It's the greatest, I, like I saw some people that you know, are not happy with crypto. I'm like, if you're a broker, crypto lottery is like godsend because they're going to trade crypto inside of there like 19 times. Where do you have the influence to make 19 people trade? It's impossible. It's like the greatest gift to a stock brokerage is algorithmic trading because an algo will make their customer trade 20 times where they would have traded once and you trade, you're charging fees. So all the DTC apps are God sends if you can override them for the brokers. But if you don't see that, but you, in the future, nobody won't even see that message, what I just said, because they want access to all those things. They're now gonna handpick, they're gonna self-select. And the broker app as a technology, the evolution of GX broker into the platform that underpins this, of course, global exchange will always be a brand on, on broker, because that's what we do, we have brokers. But that's what you're looking at. That's, that's an incredible amount of information, incredible amount of technology we're releasing on the second level. The third one, the interesting one, if the first two aren't interesting enough, is token. Um, 
man, the GX token was, for all intents and purposes, meant to be, for was meant to be something that regulated, excuse me, I'm losing my voice, I apologize for that. But the GX token was, for all intents and purposes, meant to be the coin that regulated how many brokers there were inside of GX Broker. So we said, 1,000 coins, 350,000 mil 350 million coins in total, 350,000 brokers. That was the purpose. If it was gonna ever, it was gonna find secondary market value, it was gonna find that because the amount of brokers that were coming in exceeded the amount of people that were selling brokers, selling their, losing their brokers, broker ships. Honestly, that's what I wanted to keep it as because I felt like that was, first of all, more than robust enough. I never thought or never wanted the GX token to be Bitcoin. I never thought, I never wanted the GX token to be Tether. But it's not, it wasn't meant to be, it's not that it wasn't meant to be valuable. It could have been very valuable, but it wasn't meant to be like the most everyday, oh, you're, you're, you got GXT today? Like, no, it's, it's staked so that I can build my brokerage. And we would have scaled the amount of brokers over time. But what I've realized over the last really month or so, two months, if I was to expand that view is that, is that A, People didn't, I guess people didn't understand that. That's the first thing I realized. And they thought that, that a token magically starts trading per se, even though we made it clear that technically speaking, the GX token shouldn't be trading because it should be staked. Um, okay, no problem. You know, I hear everything. I don't respond to everything, but I hear everything simply because I think actions speak louder than words. So then I got back at the drawing board. I said, look, right now, these are the amount of tokens that are out there. This many contracts are staked. We know what everything looks like. We've committed to building our own internal order book, a la tellers. We know what that looks like. We've done absolutely no marketing, apart from the marketing that our brokers have done to onboard more brokers via the GX token. Let's change some things up without 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 defaulting on what we've already done, which is obviously the, the, the GX token for the people that have staked it inside of broker to become a OTC broker and whatnot seems true. Apart from that, it's a very small amount of people. So we put together a use case list of our direct to consumer apps, which again, right now you see two, there's about 10 that have nothing to do with each other, that have all very interesting audiences. And how about we make it so that GX token goes from being a currency used to stake, which it will always be for the people that are already doing it. But like I said, that's a small amount of people. We just grant follow those people, it's not a big deal. And now make it something that's used for transactions. Okay, so first of all, whenever you hear someone say that you should be highly skeptical because no cryptocurrency is used for transactions. Even Bitcoin is used for moving dollars. If you want more information on that, we can have another podcast about that. Bitcoin is used for moving dollars. Hopefully one day, dollars will be used for moving Bitcoin. That's my goal. But as of now, Bitcoin is used for moving dollars. Which means the idea that there's some cryptocurrency with inherently currency transactional value is, is obviously not true. It's not true for Bitcoin, it ain't true for nobody. Maybe Tether, but not yet, because it's sketchy and people need more belief cycle around it. So what, what I, when I say transactional, I simply mean that there has to be one or more, plot, one or more merchants, could be software companies, could be ecosystems, could be, retailers, e-commerce, whatever, that instead of taking dollars, takes GXT. Now every company and their mother has tried to do this. Trust me, I've seen it all. I've seen every coin come out and say, we have all the hotels in Spain that are willing to take our coin. We have all the gas stations in Colombia willing to take our coin. And we have all of the, yeah, I've heard so many of that, all of that, I, 
immediately dismiss. That's not how things work. It's like saying I have all of the Italian restaurants in the Bronx that take my, that take US dollars. That wouldn't go very far. So what you actually need, which again, I might put tether in this category, but I, I'd have to rethink that statement a little bit, is you need platforms that are using dollars, but giving an alternative to also pay in GX, GX or whatever currency instead of dollars, but they're always going to take dollars. What does that look like? That the closest thing I could say to that is Costco. I've given this example before, I think like Costco says, not with their own coin, obviously, but just with discounts. If you're a Costco, not a Costco member, it's X. If you're a Costco member, it's X minus Y. Which means whatever that minus Y is valuable to the degree to that's valuable is whatever they're, whatever they're asking you to pay for it. So if they're asking you to buy a Costco membership and the Y, and you're buying you know, gallons of milk or whatever it is, and it's more expensive than the Costco membership, that's there. Alternative to Costco could just say, you can only get in here if you're using a Costco membership. That would be more like Sam's Club or something. Immediately, that currency, whether they're gonna call it a currency, a Costco membership is not a currency, you can very much abstract it as one. It becomes as valuable as how many other people shop at Costco. Not directly one-to-one, -one, but you, you can write a, cor an, a correlation equation. In other words, the value, the value of using GXT as a transactional currency has to be denominated in dollars, but it has to be accept, has to be paid in GXT, not the other way around. So that we've now already done that again. Why? I'll explain. There is approximately like 2000 contract stake, like broker contract stake. Those guys are holding most of the GXT. They're not all having a thousand, some have more, way more, some have way less. They're holding all of the primary market GXT. And then of course there's like a couple thousand on tellers or whatever it is, but that's not, we haven't really pumped. We're gonna really push that now. We have withholding the sale of primary GXT from now on, which means that you cannot buy GXT directly from the company. You have to buy it from someone on tellers. That's given, which means that whatever the total circulating supply of GXT is, it's not 350 million. It's way less than that. That's the only place you can get GXT. I've already gone over this, right? In some degree in previous videos. And now every time the roadmap you'll see, not, it's not really a roadmap because it's a today map. You'll see that there are certain things that are in the direct to consumer area that are not stake GXT like the brokers. That's, that's, that's the broker stuff. No, 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 it's you pay for it in GXT. Since, we're the, since we own most of those direct to consumer businesses, we can do that. I said something like, the broker app as a technology just for use, which might cost five to $10 a month, like a Netflix subscription. And you can have access to any company and all that. I've talked about VSA in the same fashion where you can pay for it in GXT. Crypto lottery has not had any GXT involvement. It now will. Every single application, every movement in global exchange will have a currency requirement for GXT. That's not, it's not that that wasn't done because we didn't know how to, it's because I didn't want to. Now I'm on a mission to make GXT. And all I have to do is I don't have to make 350 million valuable. I have to make the primary market sale amount valuable, which is a lot less. And now when you want to do something and I, I'm, I'm being very careful not to say those use cases, but you will see them and some of them are preposterously addictive from the perspective of useful on a daily basis that has nothing to do with crypto. Then those people will mindlessly buy GXT. Do you know why? Because they don't care about GXT. The person that needs to use GXT for crypto lottery, and I haven't explained what the use case is yet, but let's just say there comes to be, 
He doesn't care about GXT because he's not buying it to stake it. He's not buying it. I mean, some might, it might if that's the use case, but I'm just saying he's not buying it to resell it. Especially if, he's buying, if, it, if it's not a stake, if it's just a consumption, the, 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 the 30, 40, G, whatever the amount of GXT you need to pay every month to us to become a broker, it's not a stake, it's a spend to us. Like we're consuming that back. We're essentially buying it back in the format of a service. That guy doesn't care about GXT. He cares about, oh my God, this platform is only accepting the strange GXT currency. Where can I get some? And you scale that use case after use case with groups of people that have nothing to do with each other. And immediately, I assure you, there will be no liquidity left in the secondary GXT market once I'm done with that. So anybody that wants to sell their GXT, you will sell it in the next several months, I would say. I might start buying quite a bit back because if you put two and two together, if I'm successful at what I just said, are those payments payment requirements for those highly addictive applications. If they're highly addictive, I understand that's an assumption. Are they gonna stop once you guys sell your GXT? Nope, they're not. You just won't have any more. Which means when demand overtakes price, I mean supply, price starts to go way up. And in order to incubate that, in order to have a laser focus on the GX token as the primary blood flow of what we're talking about, of all the DTC applications, of the broker 2.0 movement. We've built a destination. I always said we're not interested anymore in listing on this exchange, that exchange, the other. You do it on tellers, but it's bigger than tellers. Like, I mean, it's not bigger than tellers. It's, it's GXT is its own entity because it's going to be used by people gambling, people investing, buying crypto, and a bunch of other things that have nothing to do with even financial services. And so for that, you can go to global exchange token.com right now. I think the homepage, oh, sorry. Where did they put this? Uh, oh no, they changed the domain, one second. Let's say trade. Yeah. You won't be able to log into this because I'm logging with a special password, trade.globalexchangetoken.com. This is the only place, this is the home of GXT. If you need it for something, you can come here. You can enter. And this is an entire exchange that we're releasing for one asset, GX token. Obviously, this, this is the Bitcoin order book, so don't get, don't get excited. But this is the terminal for GXT. You can trade GXT against any of these currencies. And you just come here and you buy and sell GXT. I mean, it goes, it's like tellers, but it's just an exchange interface. The guy buying GX tokens to pay for his monthly subscription for something you don't know about, he's going to spend three and a half seconds here and then get out. Cause that's all he, he just wants to do that. He'll probably be able to do that directly in those consumer apps too. It'll tie into this. If you ever want to speculate on GXC is a place to do it. Cause no, you can't spec, you can't buy it from us. Obviously we'll talk about, I'll do a tutorial on this and it's not, it's not accessible even right now. So, um, if you want to know how serious I am about that and how much you, you won't know when this all hits you. I mean, if you watch this and you believe it, if you believe what I'm saying to be something that I can pull off, then you might know. If you don't, it will hit. By the time it hits, it might be like, whoa, that was um, slightly no, wilder than I suspected. One second, I just want to show you guys something. I'm sharing my phone screen. Okay, I don't know if uh, you can see my... Ariel, do you see my Chrome tab or do you see my screen? Like, you're, you're the guy that walks away when he's gonna be used for something necessary. Yeah, one second, I want to... Desktop? What do you see right now? 
like this this screen right here. this okay so i'm going to move my device on <laughs> do you see my phone yes because you see only my chrome oh because i stopped sharing now you see my phone yes okay to explain how much we care about that as you see right here on the right hand side there's something called gx token that's the gx token app that has one page to it for you to buy and sell gxt because you need to use it for something like literally that's it on this app that i'm releasing when, and this won't be released like in the next week or next two weeks this is like the last part of this three dimension transformation. You can buy GXT market, you can sell GXT market, limit, or the last one, stake. Stake, I thought it's agnostic, what well, it is? I wanna stake 50 coins, click here. You're now gonna be able to choose from any of the global exchange applications. All of the companies that accept GXT, giving that's just that in and of itself i think is way too much information so i apologize for that um but on both fronts uh, on the on the broker side and on the token side um it's a reconstitution on the direct to consumer side that's what we're focusing on in the next week or two but you will see an onslaught i think the biggest thing to to take away from today in whatever capacity that this resonated with you guys, whoever's watching after on YouTube, is there's no such thing as global exchange. There's definitely no such thing as GX Nitrous. That would be like saying there's a such thing as Linux, only to programmers. Everybody else, when you send, when you use an app on your phone in Android, or let's put it more precisely, when a billion people every day use random apps on their phone on, on their Android, they feel Linux. When you use IBM, when IBM is powering the hospital that you're getting a transplant at, that's Linux. Can't ask someone to name it or spell it or even tell you what it does. That's global exchange. You guys are brokers or customers must find value in one of the customer applications. If, it's, if, it's, if, if everything you've ever wanted in global exchange to buy crypto, trust me, Insta Crypto's here. Love it for a second. Everything you've won in global exchange is to broker that you will become a, cheap, a broker app user who brokers for Insta Crypto. If the other things in global exchange make sense to you that we're going to release, then you will engage with those platforms. The people, the very few people that knew about global exchange until today, nobody will believe you. Nobody will believe you when, when you say, this was all part of one platform, one website. We all thought we were one community because it would have been equivalent to saying like everybody that uses Linux is like completely on one page on one platform. One thing. It would be absurd. Um, you guys also from a financial perspective, and of course there's some more tech, there's a more detailed conversation to be had about this from a financial perspective what this means, what does your existing GX broker license mean? Well, it obviously means you're still gonna get paid on what did we promise? Token sales that are primary market. You guys are gonna get paid obviously on all OTC sales, which has just become 10, 20, 30 times more lucrative because it's integrated into multiple applications. I need to make a video on that because I don't think people understand that. You make a video on how when the same, because it's all login with GX, someone goes into Insta Crypto or Crypto Lottery, they log in with their GX and use, needs to buy Bitcoin to be able to use the lottery or buy Bitcoin that you still as a broker make money. I need to make a video on that because I don't think people saw it, but you still get all of that. You get grandfathered into the broker app. You don't have to pay for that. And that is, and of course you have your GXT. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to uh, find liquidity for your GXT, it's coming up very quickly. And I think that covers most of the people that know about it. I, I'd probably put an optimistic number about 10,000 constituents in global exchange over the one year that we've been around, maybe people that have used it, signed, I mean, let's just sign ups, which could have included brokers, customers, whatever. 
and like obviously not 10,000 actively engaging. But the next 10,000 won't know each other because there'll be groups of 10,000s and they'll all be in love or hate a specific thing. You guys, if you guys saw the support set of videos I talked about, that support system on hold, chats, tickets, learn, goes into everything. We've ubiquitized the support, we've ubiquitized, we've put the vault as a ledger into everything. Now, the only question is, how much people can we get to buy into this from a technology perspective? And when I say people, I'm not saying users, because users are gonna be a function of how many creative applications that we have, which is a function of how many people wanna integrate this into their apps. We already know Instagram crypto is gonna be big because it solves the problem. We already know crypto is gonna be big to people that care about that. We'll see the next uh, ticket to We already know broker app, that's just a stupid broker app. It's redefining, first of all, there's never even been brokerage software even in the traditional financial world. So this covers that. Secondarily, it simplifies everything from the perspective of what a broker is even in global exchange. Because now you're, you're not what we tell you, you're what you are. And you, can, you are in control, you're the entrepreneur, you're, you're in charge of your business. You hate a brand, you can work with them. You don't like global exchange, we're just a brand on broker app. And token, if you wanted to sell your tokens, you couldn't. Thank you for your patience, there will be a market very quickly. Not just technically speaking with global exchange token.com in the app, but also from a sentiment, like from a demand perspective. I think that covers the three paradigms, at least introduces the three paradigms. And uh, as this was a bone chilling experience to go over all of this, actually. I wasn't planning on going over most of it um, because it's like, I know what it feels like to be in the eye of the hurricane. Like very few people probably know it like the way that I know that feeling. So um, like we're, we're, we're there. It's really peaceful. There's three people now left on this call. It's five, four, five six o'clock here in Bangalore. Nobody knows anything that I just said is coming. But we've been, I've, we've worked on it night, day and 24 seven to reconstitute the system. So. We will see how the next six months transpires. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Martin, you're the, if, we, if I was ever in a foxhole, I would want to be with you. Um, you're unbelievable. I'm even Fito, Antoine, um, Jonathan, thank you so much for attending the call. You will also get updated on the uh, people that are going to be official guests on next week's broker conference call, broker council conference, a weekly basis. If you guys have any questions, if you haven't downloaded InstaCrypto, please let me know. I will get that done. There'll be a, it is already uploaded to App Store. We'll get it approved quickly. It's appro I think Apple maybe approved it. It's just they're not publishing it. Um, that will be the that will be the talk of the next week for us. Some of these things that I've talked about today won't be out this week. Some of it will. Well, InstaCrypto will. Crypto Lottery will. Like from a, just a marketing. We have start. We have, for those that started Crypto Lottery, we haven't started Crypto Lottery. We finished Crypto Lottery. Now, now we're about to finish working on it. There's so many new features in that I've talked about. It was like, now we're going to talk about talking to people that only care about crypto. I was sitting next, the developer that was just working next to me today came in on a Sunday to work for some finishing some other project. Said he didn't know anything about crypto lottery. Obviously, I don't really talk about it that much. And he was just flabbergasted that it was done next to him, built next to him, and um, and he just bought some tickets. This is just an offshoot developer that works for me that is you know, not affluent, not like a crypto savant in a country that crypto is not easy to get. You should have seen the, the wideness on his eyes. That, 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 you'll see that side a lot. Thank you so much, guys.